Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And a special welcome to any visitors that we have with us. We're glad to have you here and invite you to come and be with us again. We have welcomed those of you who join us for worship out in the parking lot. We're glad to have you join us as well. Just a reminder, all of our services are video recorded and are available on the church website when they're put up uh, during the week. We're excited to have the blessing of the backpacks as we look forward to the start of the school year this week. And uh, so we rejoice with all those who will be uh, starting that educational effort this week, and we will keep them in prayers as well. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing the hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Holy is the Lord the Almighty. He is and he is to come. He is worthy of glory and honor and power. He created all things by his will they came to be. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain. By his blood he purchased for God the people of every race and tongue, of every folk and nation. Christ made of them a kingdom, and priests to serve our God. And they shall reign on earth forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus. Let us pray. O God, judge eternal, you love justice and hate oppression. And you call us to share your zeal for truth. Give us courage to take our stand with all victims of bloodshed and greed. And following your servants and prophets to look to the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Luther's small catechism, the table thanksgiving. How the head of the house is to teach members of the household to offer thanksgiving at meals. After eating, they should fold their hands and recite devoutly. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed by the might of a horse and has no pleasure in the speed of a runner, but finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord, in those who await God's steadfast love. Then recite the Lord's Prayer and the following prayer. We give thanks to you, Lord God our Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for all your benefits, you who live and reign forever. Amen. Invite the children forward for the children's service. Be sure and bring your backpack. Come on, let them in. There you go. All right, it's good to see all of you this morning. Now, I want to look at the variety of backpacks here. I want you to hold them up. Show everybody out there. We have blue ones, and we have pink ones, and we have leopard spot ones. Oh my, very good. Now, did you pick those out? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was the most important thing of picking them out? Color? Size? What's that? Okay. How did you know it's going to have everything that go, be able to carry everything that goes in it? Did you think about that? What goes in a backpack that you're going to use for school? Notebooks, crayon, pencil, water bottle. What was it? Paper, erasers. What about the hook? Folders. Folders. Okay. Good. 
Binders. All right. What is that? Okay. Wait. And, and, and are you allowed to keep, keep food in your in your backpack? I don't know what the school rules are. No. No. Okay. All right. Well, you're also going to have, and that goes on the paper and everything you you mentioned. You're going to have homework. Be in there and assignments and books. Do they have books anymore? Oh, okay. You, you still you still use books. Okay, that's a, some some of them. No, some of them don't. Yeah, some of them don't. They they do it all online. Well, I'm going to suggest that you put something else in your backpack every day as well. I would like for you and. Some of you may have a little Bible. That would be a good thing to put in sometimes if you have room. But one thing that we always have room that I hope you put in every day is a little prayer. Thanking God for the opportunity for you to go to school. Thanking God for your parents who are overseeing you. Thanking God for your teachers. And most of all, thanking God for you, giving you the ability to think and listen and look and learn. So can you add that to your backpack every day? We're going to start today by doing a blessing uh, of your backpack. We're going to start off with a prayer for all of you in your backpacks. So what I want you to do is I want you to line up over here. And we're going to do it where I'm going to put it on one hand with the blessing and you're going to put a hand on the backpack that's in front of you so that that blessing goes all the way down the line. Okay? And then, after that, don't go back to the pew right away because we're going to, I'm going to give you then some of these things to put on so that you remind, to remind you of God's blessing. It says on one side... This backpack is filled with God's blessings. And on the other side it says, This backpack has been blessed by St. Paul Lutheran Church of Rayburg, who loves, prays for, and supports this student. And it's a blessed backpack. So I want you out there to also fill up their backpacks today and every day with a prayer for their safety, for their learning, thanks for their families, their parents, their teachers, the administrators, all that are involved in their education, and most of all, for them, that God is giving them this chance to learn and grow. Okay? So after we do the blessing, make sure and get a little uh, tag for your backpack. Okay? And congregation, you promise to do that? Pray for them every day? Oh, you can do better than that, yes? yes? Good. All right. Let's line up then, and so we have our blessing. Yeah. Okay, get lined up. All along here. and I'm going to do the blessing from this end. So come around here, Henry, please. Everybody put a hand on the backpack next to you. Okay? Onto your left. Put your left hand onto the backpack of, of the person beside you. There you go. Okay, let us pray. Gracious God, we lift to you today these students. They stand here ready to receive your blessings and they commit themselves to study and learning 
in the school year ahead. We ask your blessing on each of them. Further, we ask your blessing on these backpacks. They will hold the schoolwork of each student and will be carried from home to school and back again. As these students carry these backpacks, may they be reminded of the love and care of this congregation that surrounds them each school day. We pray as well for the teachers and administrators in our school. May they also be sustained by your blessing. May they be reminded that this congregation embraces their call to teaching and learning and surrounds them with love and care as well. We pray in the name of Jesus who we seek to follow day by day. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's get your tags and then you can go back to your seat and have a very blessed school year. first lesson <clears throat> is from the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not feel heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long? Will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back, those who prophesy lies, who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has a straw in common with wheat? says the Lord. Is it not my word like fire, says the Lord? And like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Here ends the reading. <coughs> we will read Psalm 82 responsibly by verse. God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He gives judgment in the midst of the gods. How long will you just unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan, defend the humble and needy, rescue the weak and the poor, deliver them from the power of the wicked. They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods and all of you children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Rise, O God, and fool the earth, for you shall take all nations for your own. The second lesson <clears throat> is from the 11th and 12th chapters of Hebrews. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned it. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient, 
because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death, they were sawed in two, they were killed by the sword, they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better so they would not fall apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Here ends the reading. Please stand for the gospel. Hallelujah. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The Holy Gospel lesson according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, It is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jesus' words opening our, opening our Gospel text seem eerily relevant given the fire our community experienced last Sunday. At first glance, we may tend to think there's something wrong with today's gospel lesson. After all, we have usually heard about Jesus and his ministry being related to the coming of peace. 
Isaiah the prophet said Jesus was to be wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Angels praising God at Jesus' birth saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. In the Kyrie on Communion Sundays, we pray for the peace of the whole world. But now, in our Gospel text for today, Jesus asks, Do you think that I have come to bring peace on the earth? And he answers, No, but I tell you rather division. So what's going on here? We need to realize a couple of things in this gospel text. Jesus is speaking not only to the disciples, but to the entire crowd who came to hear him. He wants to be clear. His ministry is beyond just this world. Instead, it is about heavenly and eternal matters as well. Jesus is pushing, pushing his listeners to look at this world in a new way, seeing the reality of the world in the light of the coming kingdom of God. He uses several vivid and dramatic images. The first image is that of fire. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. We often equate fire with destruction, burned homes and trees from images in the West and even in our community. And indeed, there are images in Scripture equating fire with judgment, suffering, and destruction. But there are even more instances equating fire with other images. One such image is fire as refining and purifying. Several of the prophets speak of God refining and purifying the people of Israel and Judah with the fire of exile. This image is of God burning away the effects of sin and rebellion in order to make the people more clean and pure. Just as fire burns away the impurities in gold and silver, leaving only the purified precious metal. Another image of fire is as energy and God's presence. There are several examples in scripture. Moses encountered God's presence and call in the burning bush. God led the Israelites out of Egypt by cloud at day and by pillar of fire at night. Note that God was present and was leading them. When Moses went up Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments, smoke and fire enveloped the mountain. God was present. John the Baptist said Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The disciples who met Jesus on the Emmaus Road on the day of resurrection said after they recognized Jesus, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road? God was present and energizing. On the day of Pentecost, tongues of fire were distributed and resting on those in the room. God the Holy Spirit was present and energizing them for ministry. It is these images of fire, of refining and purifying, and of the reality of the energy and presence and life of God to which Jesus is alluding. Jesus says he wishes this fire were already kindled, already spreading. 
Someone said Jesus was ready to light the match. Furthermore, for Jesus, this fire is the function of his ministry. His baptism, he calls it in verse 50. And he says he is under tremendous stress until the baptism of his death and resurrection is accomplished. Talk about stress. To be willing to take on the sin of the world in order to purify and bring life to sinners, that is quite the task. The second image in the text is the deep division Jesus brings. This division is based on the relationship people have to Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You see, commitment to Jesus divides. Jesus describes this division even within households as three verses two, two verses three. Father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, and one that's not so far-fetched, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. These divisions are serious, and they hurt, particularly within a family. Jesus is touching on the pain and stress that for believers accompanies the mystery of unbelief. Jesus has died and risen from death, destroying the power of sin and death so that we can know eternal life simply by believing and living with Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And yet, in spite of what Jesus has done to save us, some people say, I don't want it. I don't need it. I don't have time for it. I have more important things to do. Indeed, we can look around us and see many who were lost and who are not showing fruits of faith. When addressing commitment, we hear, well, my grandparents were charter members there, my wife goes there, or my husband goes there, or my parents attend. I was baptized and confirmed there, married there, and I'm going to be buried there. As if this is enough. Even though Jesus has opened a way to eternal life, they are missing it because they're not living in Christ. And all too often we're tempted to shrug our shoulders and say, what can we do? But we're called to love them enough so that they are not left to continue their path apart from the life God wills for them in Jesus Christ. We are called to work to bring them back to a living relationship with Jesus. A wise old pastor once told me that sooner or later something is going to happen in a person's life that will cause them to re-examine their relationship with Jesus. And he said that when this happens, we as the church are to be ready to help guide them back onto the path to life in Christ. This then brings us to the third point of the gospel lesson. For nine seasons, Seinfeld was the top rated comedy on the air. It dominated the Thursday night television lineup but the show almost didn't make it to the airwaves in the first place. The first few episodes didn't test well with audiences. Audience members had a number of discouraging things to say about it. The character of Jerry received a lukewarm reaction 
and was considered by the test audiences to be dense and naive. The character of George was labeled a, limp, a wimp. The whole thing was rated as average in humor. How many times through history have the prognosticators been wrong? The telephone has too many shortcomings to be seriously considered as a means of communication. The device is inherently of no value to us. Thus read a Western Union internal memo in 1876. The wireless music box has no imaginable commercial value. Who would pay for a message sent to nobody in particular? David Sarnoff's associates in response to his urgings for investment in the radio in, 19, in the 1920s. I'm just glad it'll be Clark Gable who's falling on his face and not Gary Cooper. Gary Cooper said this about his decision not to take the leading role in Gone with the Wind. We don't like their sound and guitar music is on the way out. So wrote Decca Recording Company rejecting the Beatles in 1962. Drill for oil? You mean drill into the ground and try to find oil? You're crazy. That's how potential drillers responded to Edwin L. Drake in 1859. The bomb will never go off. I speak as an expert in explosives, said Admiral William Leahy of the U.S. Atomic Bomb Project. Man will never reach the moon regardless of all future scientific advances, said Dr. Lee DeForest, inventor of the vacuum tube and the father of television. Someone has said that hindsight is 2020, and it is true. Time after time, people have been wrong, particularly about the future. Jesus addresses the crowd in the gospel lesson. They were evidently very good weathermen. Jesus said that they could tell by the clouds and wind when it was going to rain or be hot and dry but they were not any better at reading the urgency of the times than the prognostication of those in the illustration. We, as disciples of Jesus, know the urgency of these times. Theologians have raised up the idea that our times are more like the times of the early church than the times of an established church. We could not readily assume people we meet are Christians, as we once often were able to assume, even if their names are on a church membership roll. We cannot assume that they have heard of Jesus in a way that he is Lord, and that to confess and follow him makes a difference and demands a new life in response to his death and resurrection. We are to be about God's mission that reintroduces Jesus or introduces him to some for the first time. And this is the point of our calling. In God's mission, we are called to be the fire of Jesus upon the earth. We are called to be that refining and purifying fire of Jesus, calling people to live in God's grace and holiness. We are called to be that fire of God's presence in people's lives, bringing the energy and warmth of God's love and life. We are, to be, we are called to be on fire for Jesus so that commitment to him in life is the basis of our lives, individually and as a congregation. 
and that that fire energizes us to do ministry in Jesus' name as we are called. We are called to be on fire for Jesus so that we look for and hurt over those not living in Jesus and love them enough to call them back and help them return to a saving relationship with him. And so, may you be on fire for Jesus and be his fire upon the earth today and always. Amen. Please stand. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your church. We pray for all who dedicate their lives to join your people. Renew our commitment to our siblings in faith around the globe and bless the work of our economical and interfaith partners. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your creation. We pray for all places affected by natural disasters. Particularly, we give thanks for your gracious protection from the fire in our community. We thank you that no human lives were lost. 
Bless those who served as firefighters, emergency personnel, and healthy neighbors. Transform the devastation of floods and fires into fertile ground for new life and growth. Fill heaven and earth with your life-giving spirit. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain the nations. We pray for all elected officials. Kindle in them a desire to administer your justice. Strengthen their resolve to defend those who are vulnerable and to stand publicly against all forms of oppression. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain those who are oppressed. We pray for people harmed by racist discrimination, ableist discrimination, and all people who face discrimination. Rescue us from all systems that degrade our fellow human beings. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain this assembly. We pray for this community, celebrating with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. We pray for those who mourn, especially the family of Lutz Melhorn. Be with those who are dying and comfort those who are sick and suffering, especially Bobby Bredar, Ruby Zilke, Jean Gerlitz, Ray Neenstead, Vicki Klecker, Dolores Goldberg, Mark Kundemer, Annie Malky, Barely Goldberg, Travis Fisher, Tom Brinkmeyer, Betty Holt, Diane Bainaman, Wayne Fox, Don Stark, Lindley Kasurik, Jane McKinley, Ralph Huber Jr., and others we now name. In our joy and in our tears, be near us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let us pray for all who are beginning a new school year, that both students and teachers will be blessed in their academic endeavors. We ask that you would protect these, both children and adults, watch over them and keep them safe as they travel to and from school and throughout the school day. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we remember the saints who have gone before us. May we want with perseverance the race set before us until we find our rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. In response to God's love and grace, we bring our offerings. Please stand. Let us pray. Merciful Father, 
We offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.